Old Winkle and the Seagulls by Elizabeth and Gerald Rose. Old Winkle was not very good at catching fish and the other fishermen laughed at him and his old fashioned boat. But he loved feeding the seagulls and when all the fish seemed to disappear from the sea, it was Old Winkle and the seagulls who saved the day. Old Winkle tossed fish and crumbs to the gulls, which swooped and dived to catch them, making patterns in the air. What a waste of time, scoffed Mac, the engineer from one of the big drifters. No wonder he can't catch fish. And look at his boat, nothing but an old tub. The other fishermen laughed. Their boats were bright with new paint and full of shiny instruments to tell them about the weather and the shoals of fish. Poor Winkle felt lonely and sad when they teased him, for he had few friends and little luck with his fishing. He had only the goals for company. Now there came a time when there was a great shortage of fish, when not a fish was to be found, so that the boats lay idle in the harbour. The second mate of the gay lady went below decks and made model ships in bottles. He made a paddle boat, a clipper and a drifter. The skipper smoked dark shag in his briar pipe and gazed sadly at the empty sea. The fisher girls, who gutted and packed the herring, gossiped, for they had no work to do. Some brought out their knitting and made warm woolly socks for their husbands and boyfriends. Jock McPhillip, the fishmonger, pulled down the blinds in his shop and went home. His cat grew very thin. But the driver of the lorry, which kept the fish fresh, sat in Fred's cafe all day long drinking tea. One day he drank 17 cups and Fred said he would soon look like a teapot. The mayor, who missed his morning kipper, was most upset, for he had to breakfast on boiled eggs, which he hated. The situation became very grave and experts were called in from the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. They brought maps and charts and books and papers and studied them all day. They scratched their heads and wrinkled their brows but in spite of their knowledge of the ways of fish they could not provide an answer. One day, when all the other fishermen had given up hope, Old Winkle was still fishing beyond the sandbank, close to the great boy. He knew that sooner or later fish were bound to come that way. While he sat there, a scraggy old bird that he had fed many times alighted on the boy. It stretched its neck and jerked its wings as it creaked and screamed. Follow me, it seemed to say, and Winkle, not at all surprised, started his engine. Off they went, the seagull flapping low over the waves and Winkle's old boat chuff chuffing along behind. Old Winkle scanned the horizon, looking for a sign that fish might be there. Suddenly, he saw a teeming mass of gulls wheeling and screaming, turning and whirling above a shoal of fish. Immediately, he threw his nets overboard and felt the weight of the fish as he hauled them in. Never had Winkle seen such a number as he drew them to the surface and filled his boat until it could hold no more. He waved to the gulls and set off for the harbour. Ahoy, he called. The fish are back. And he pointed to the still swirling birds. The gulls told me. When they saw his fish, the men were too amazed to tease him. Without a word, they started their engines and all the drifters put to sea in a great fleet. Their nets nearly broke with the weight of their catch. The boats returned slowly to harbour, loaded down, and the fishermen were overjoyed at their good fortune. The cranes creaked as they lifted baskets of fish onto the quay. Men shouted in the busy market as the fish invaded the quiet town in their thousands. The fisher girls set to work, but though their hands flicked and flew over the slippery fish as they cleaned them, they found more baskets from the boats waiting to be done. Night came and still they worked on. There were fish in the boats, fish on the quay, fish in boxes, fish in bags and sacks, 
tubs and barrows, fish everywhere. Jock McPhillip did a great trade. And his cat grew very fat. Bert stopped drinking tea. He loaded up his lorry to take the fish to London. The mayor was delighted and said he felt twice a man. Yum. The experts were amazed. They left the town in disgrace, forgetting their maps in their hurry. <coughs> Old Winkle was greatly respected. The skippers of the drifters wanted to buy him a new boat, but Winkle said, no, thank you. Fishing wouldn't be quite the same. So they put a new engine in Sally and painted her blue and white. Men were proud to say they had been in Winkle's company. And on Sunday mornings, Old Winkle was not the only one feeding seagulls.